Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. It's feeding time. Um, don't bite yourself, even though that you like to do that. Culprits are not the most cleanly snake to keep. If you don't want to or don't like to clean cages, culprits certainly are not what you want to keep in your collection. Um, as you can see, these guys are quite excited about getting food. He's going into shed. He has a dirty water ball that we have to clean. Oh, take your food down. Thank you. These are equatorial spitting culbras, and believe me, they do spit. Um, the venom, if you get it in your eyes, is a very painful ordeal, as I experienced once. I didn't have a pair of goggles that had really tight uh, area here on the bridge of the nose. Uh, I got spit on from this guy in particular. It uh, hit here and ran into the corner of my eye. Uh, it was a trip to the emergency room to have my eyes flushed with cold saline for you know a good hour or so, and only at that point did it feel like um, you know they could let me go and I could open my eyes. It was still a painful ordeal. I recovered over the past you know it took several days to fully recover, but. Um, yes, you don't want spitting cobra venom in your eyes or perhaps any venom. Oh, and look at that venom dripping down. Uh, yes. They spit regularly. <laughs> yes, they're frequent flyers. Ah, Pogo is eating for a change. Oh, very good. I told you, you know, she's a rat specialist. I, I was out of rats. I didn't have the correct size, and unlike that person in my group uh, who decided to feed a snake uh, a huge meal even though that uh, it wasn't really a good idea uh, I you know she had to wait until I had the proper size um, so she's uh, enjoying her rat so uh, we'll just let her do that uh, I'm very pleased. Uh, Pogo's been with me since 2005. Um, and I like having her around, even though she can be quite uh, quite a bit of problem to deal with if you have to take her out of her cage. She absolutely hates to come out of her cage and fights you every single way, and then you know is just just terribly stressed. Uh, for several days after. So we don't like to do this uh, on a regular basis. So this is a proper sized meal for a blue insularis uh, insular pit viper. Uh, this is in an appropriate size. Um, you know just because you have this one and not this one doesn't mean that you should feed the animal that week. You should wait until you've got the, this size. Uh, people uh, not feeding their animals property, properly is uh, a bit of an annoyance to me. Hi, girly. Would you like this? 
Huh? Oh, okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll take that as a yes, and I'll leave that behind for you. So this is Thud. Thud is a ringed water cobra. And Thud is a very, very uh, uh, good feeder. Hello, dude. How you doing? Don't look at me. Look at the food. Thud's a very, very relaxed character, uh, except when there's food present. Um, he's a snake that I generally can work with without uh, worrying too much, again, unless there's food present. Um, these guys have only a mostly neurotoxic bite with very little cytotoxin like uh, other culvers in Africa. Uh, culvers that have big hoods and big uh, defense displays generally have a larger cytotoxic component to their venom, whereas snakes that have small hoods uh, and less of a threat display or coloration like the water culvers in particular, um, they have less cytotoxins and it's not considered a, a defensive bite um, per se. Uh, this was uh, uh, demonstrated in a very nice paper but that Brian Fry and his group did, uh, looking at cytotoxins and venom, uh, snake metalloproteases. Uh, they have very, very few uh, local effects uh, caused by their venom. And this is normal for him. He sort of savors it, bites it, and holds on to it. So we can uh, we can be here for half an hour before he eats it. So we're just going to put him back in there and let him uh, do his thing. Sticks. Why does it have to be sticks? There we go. Yes. If you don't notice things like that, you can leave them just enough room to work the door open and Kate, uh, snakes roaming around the room when you don't know it is definitely a bad thing. Yes, Mr. Brown, be patient. I have something for you. Mr. Brown is pacing around his cage, tail slapping, because he hasn't gotten any food from me today. As you can see, Miss Blue Insularis is uh, enjoying her, uh, her treat there. Well, she's having a little bit of trouble with it because she's trying to fold it in half. Uh, yes, this is why I like handing it to them, because this way there's no uh, issues. Those are some nice looking things. Oh, absolutely. You know, birds are part of their prey uh, menu in their natural environment. Therefore, the fangs have to be very long in order to penetrate uh, those feathers and envenomate. I'm having a while at this. Okay. Well, we need to move on because Mr. Brown is quite unhappy. Okay. Now here we are at the coral cobra cage. And this is the male coral cobra moving about in the foreground here. Hello, dude. Would you like a drink, huh? I know you would like a mouse or something, huh? Would you like a drink? I'll give you a nice drink. Well, 
There you go. That's a good guy. Now, I dumped out the, his and her water dish because coral cobras have this very bad habit of laying eggs in water dish. Um, so, it's best not to have any water in the water dish because the female looks like she's gravid and she's in and out of the nesting box. Uh, she right now is, of course, somewhat interested in food like he is. Um, I don't have any... I fed him yesterday. And when you feed him, or you feed either one of these guys, you really need to, uh, need to occupy both mouths at the same time. Otherwise, there's problems. So, you can go back in there, dude. little bit of a hood of there going away mad because there wasn't <laughs> anything to eat but like like I said I fed him yesterday he had like three fuzzies uh, that should be a reasonable uh, meal for a week um, of course these guys always want more so uh, and the female is is now moving to see and taste uh, what that was all about did he get food and I didn't he, she got food, but, well, you know, one reason I think she's, you know, very gravid and she can't really keep a lot of food in her gut. Uh, so she's been, she's normally a ravenous feeder. I mean, uh, we've seen some of my earlier videos of her. She just goes berserk when food is present. Um, and she's been sort of, eh. Well, you know, sort of maybe I'll eat this. Uh, not really terribly interested. So she had a couple things to eat yesterday too, um, but really not herself. And that's why I think she's growing a whole bunch of embryos. And uh, that's why I put a nesting box back there because I want her to drop those eggs in there and not in the water dish. Now, Mr. Popia ate his mouse, but it's apparently still very interested and uh, looking very hopeful uh, in getting something else to eat. Uh, uh, but, oh, that was a nice warm hand there you saw, huh? But we're not going to give him anything else. Uh, you know, he had a couple of fuzzies yesterday and a hopper just now. Uh, he doesn't need anything else. Well, I've been away for 10 days now and my scaly kids uh, are anticipating my return uh, because I am the guy that ultimately brings them food. So let's have a look on at them. Hello, Miss Taipan, what are you up to, huh? Well, she's breathing, so I'm not going to disturb her. Well, we have a light out. Well, hi, Mr. Forrest Cobra. He's happy, always happy to see you. Oh, Mr. Chai Pan, he knows that I'm here, huh? Hello. It's very disturbing when they're trying to get out like that. Yeah. Oh, Miss, boy, it's the food guy. Miss Coloradus, you yeah, got some sheddings to clean up, as well as cages and all sorts of things. Hi, Bucky. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to startle you. Anybody else uh, sort of looks okay? Let's have a look at this guy. He's three years old uh, at the end of June. He's pretty much the runt, and he's just started to do pretty well food wise. I'm not going to mess with. 
The water cobras recognize that I'm here. Hello. Yes, we will feed you. <laughs> Hello, it's me. Maybe she'll catch my scent, uh, I guess. Uh, eh, this one is still wearing a hat. Yes, which, really, you know, she is just a terrible shedder, both the male and the female, white tailed lance heads. Um, it's always a nightmare to keep them uh, hydrated enough to uh, allow them to shed. And water culprits like showing their junk as usual. That's a big boy. And you've been snotting up your glass. Really running low on bulbs. And yeah, we go through those like crazy. Well, these things are crap. Uh, Zoomed. Uh, bulbs. Uh, they have no life expectancy at all. Um, they just uh, fail anywhere from uh, one to two days uh, after you use them, anywhere out to like a month or two, and then they just, uh, they're just done. You know, the, the snakes are well nourished here. It's not like I'm uh, starving them to death. Um, you know, adult snakes, you know, essentially like uh, this gal, um, 10 days without something to eat should be uh, hardly noticeable. Um, I guess they do look forward to that. Uh, if they fail to kill me, they at least get something to eat. <laughs> Let's go over next door. Oh. You see, you guys are out. Are you guys uh, thinking about making some eggs? Huh? Visit those guys later. How's everybody doing, huh? Oh, there's the brown shed. Oh, that one's interested in me. Those guys acknowledge my presence. Hello, Elvis. latest uh, arrivals, an Egyptian sawscale viper, hello, that's a male, and that's a female, hello, and that's a male coloratus, uh, all these guys are going to have to be fed. along with everybody else, so uh, we'll get going uh, a little later. Nice. You made a mess of your cage, huh? There, you've got water. Hello, I see you shed too, huh? Mr. Thud. Alright, so that's everybody. So, I suppose we should dole out some food. Oh, look who's poking her head out to see if there's anything to eat. Well, if you remember, she was offered a mouse, bit it, but didn't eat it, because I think we were working in here too much, and she's a very secretive snake, uh, like all the Bothrops. 
There's a Jaraka. Uh, that one is not so secretive. <laughs> Makes uh, no bones about it that it's looking for food. All right, well, we'll pick up where we left off as usual. Hello, Mr. Brown. How are you doing, bud? Hi, you whack job. Yeah, easy, easy. You're a silly snake. You are a silly snake, but unbelievably lightning fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. 